going on everybody we just got back in from an evening of fishing with the boys and some friends and haven't done any tying in a little bit so i wanted to uh whip up a little fly here and i was just thinking i was like what should i tie and then i thought about it a little bit more and i thought man woolly bugger is pretty effective just about anywhere and one of the things that i really like about a woolly bugger is it kind of can look like anything. It's basically a small streamer that looks like it could be a small bait fish, could be a bug. Um, depending on how you tie it, there's there's several different variations that you could do with it. You could um, you could throw like some barbell eyes on the front of it, give it a little weight to get it down in the water a little uh, deeper. You could fish it weightless with with no weight on it, and it's a pretty effective fly. I've caught a lot of fish on a woolly bugger, so. I've done a video tying a woolly bugger before. It wasn't really an instructional video. And this isn't really going to be much of an instructional video either. It's just pretty much going to be me sitting here ranting while I tie a fly. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get uh, on it. Um, I'm actually going to start off with a uh, Eric's uh, NS105 uh, streamer hook. This is a barbless and a size 8. And got that in the vise here. And I'm actually going to use... A, uh, this is a Vivas uh, 140 in olive. Start dressing this guy up here and just start off with laying down a little thread base on here. This bobbin I'm not crazy about is a pretty tight bobbin. Yeah, cut this tag loose. Yes, yeah, so we had a, a pretty good evening out on the uh, water and the, uh, we were just walking around down at the uh, Falls of the Ohio. Had a pretty good time down there. And my buddy caught a nice little smallmouth right there off the shore. It was around 12, 12 to 14 inch fish. So I'm going to try to keep this uh, woolly bugger mostly in olive. So I'm going to actually do a two tone tail on it. I'm going to do olive marabou and this uh, tiger bard brown and uh, yellow. What I'll do is I'll start with the, uh, the tiger bard first. And this will be the bottom. Hopefully give the fly a little bit of a hot spot. I wanna try to uh, give the fish something to really strike at. Yeah, we had a good time out this evening with the boys and they brought their friend Josh along and he really enjoyed fishing with us so we had a good time there and this video is kind of a shout out to Josh because he was the one that gave me the idea to do a fly tying video yeah we actually had a little bit of rain and the river came up a little bit not terribly high but high enough that uh, the water was moving a little better than it has been it's been been pretty dry here for a little while Throw this olive. Remember, this is going to be a primarily olive fly, but I like to I like to do the two-tone tail sometimes. I know some people just to add some bulk to the fly will tie this out a little more. I'm trying to do a little bit of that just to get a few extra wraps in here. Cut this off. Nice thing about doing a woolly bugger is it doesn't take a whole lot of materials to do. It's a super, super effective fly. I think even uh, Ben, the huge fly fisherman, did a video. I think he actually caught a redfish on a woolly bugger. But you have to go and check that out and see. I'm pretty, but I'm pretty sure I remember him talking about that in one of his videos back from a few years back so yeah i actually got this uh this is just some green uh, chenille here in a it's kind of an olive and chartreuse blend 
we're gonna use that on the body. And then we have this old hackle here. This is, I've had this for a long time. So hopefully, hopefully I don't break one of these when I tie it in there. One other thing that I've done in the past, which I'll do it now since I'm working on this, is um, throwing in a little bit of a uh, little piece of wire just to bind everything together. This is some super small wire. You probably won't even see this in the fly. You can use some larger wire. It's, it's a good way to add weight to a fly too, if you're trying to get something to sink a little more. But I'm not really too worried about making a sink. This is some really, really thin uh, ultra wire. This is the uh, extra small, this is gunmetal blue. I, I, I'm not really worried about the color of it. This is literally just, just to add a little extra binding to this fly just to hold it together. That way, hopefully, when the big small mouth is pulling and thrashing on it, it doesn't come apart. So I actually got to take the blitz out and cast it a little bit this evening. I really enjoy that rod. It's been um, it's kind of been a learning experience with it, but I've really been enjoying fishing that that rod and. Um, I actually did have one smallmouth that chased my clouser minnow, and it was my fault. I just missed the hook set completely, not paying attention. Hopefully, here in the near future, I can get back down there and give it another shot and see what uh, what I can do with it. I actually used the Blitz quite a bit in uh, Wisconsin and caught several uh, northern pike on it several largemouth bass and uh, had no issues out of the rod really enjoyed fishing that that rod so i'm just kind of tying my materials here in the and i'm going to tie this one weightless just because i've already got several woolly buggers that have some lead eyes on them all right so i'm gonna go ahead and Move my thread up here, and I'm actually going to use the uh, bobbin holder. So I'll go ahead and start with the uh, chenille, and I could use the rotary function on the vise, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to wrap it, get this body laid down on here. In good so it doesn't pull out and then being careful not to cut my thread which I did a lot when I first started with the fly tying I made that mistake many times of nicking my thread all right I'm gonna go ahead and wrap my wire here just kind of work it through the material. I'm doing pretty wide wraps. I have a messy fly. I just want to do a little bit of tie-in so I can clean up my eyelet there a little bit. And I'm going to start to wrap this guy. Take some wider wraps with this feather. I'm not trying to bunch it up too much. So I can do this without making a mess of the hackle feather. This is not the cleanest one I've ever done, but I'm also pretty tired. <laughs> it was pretty hot out there on the river today. I'm gonna go ahead and whip finish this guy and then I'll fluff it out a little bit. That was a pretty basic woolly bugger. So it's not the best one I've ever done, but that will catch a fish.
But anyway, that's gonna wrap that up. Stay tuned because I have a motor for the Sun Dolphin that we're gonna do a little bit of freshening up on. I'll just do a series of talking about what we're gonna do with this motor we got. So I'm gonna do that here hopefully sometime this week if I can get free from work uh, long enough to uh, mess with it. But anyway, I guess that'll wrap everything up here. Like and subscribe and we'll catch you guys uh, hopefully later this week. All right, see ya.